Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks so much for the introduction. So what I'd like to talk about today is a superpower that actually impacts everybody in this room. It's the ability to supercharge sustainability. And the story starts not necessarily at MIT, but a place like this. This is a lithium extraction facility in Chile. And a lot of you are probably aware that lithium is an element that forms the backbone of the lithium ion battery, which is a technology that very well may save the planet as we know it, in very much a superhero fashion, of course. So we all know, really, as a fact at this point, that in order to mitigate the extensive effects and ongoing worsening effects of climate change, we need to make broad, global, sweeping changes across all of society. And one of those important changes is the massive electrification of numerous sectors, including transportation, agriculture, manufacturing. I could stand here all day and talk through the whole list, but we don't have time. You get the idea. And the really good news, this sounds daunting, right? But the really good news is that we actually have technologies available right now today to both generate this clean, sustainable electricity and also to store this electricity and deploy it when we need it, like the lithium-ion battery, for instance. Unfortunately, it's not all good news. The not-so-great news is that we may not have enough lithium available to us in the near future, as well as other materials, to actually make these batteries we need to store this electricity. Almost every projection predicts a massive demand surge in the near future, largely thanks to electric vehicles, which of course are a great thing. So much so that within 10 years, the demand's actually projected to go up about 10 times, which is pretty staggering. And in fact, by 2040, we may only have half the lithium available to make all the batteries we need to store that important electricity. And so the crucial question then becomes, can the supply chain actually close this gap while avoiding economic, environmental, and geopolitical catastrophe? So it's a pretty big, deep question, right? And so where we have to actually start is actually in the lithium-ion battery market trends, uh, the relative trends with manufacturing, development, implementation that we see around the world today. And so we think about important metrics in the battery space, whether we're talking about electric vehicles or grid-level storage, three things probably come to mind already for you all in this room today. We need safety, performance, and cost. These are the most important metrics that we can think about. We want a battery that doesn't burst into flame. We want a battery with a long life cycle, multiple charging cycles uh, capability, and also one that comes in at the right price point for implementation across these various applications. So these metrics may seem a little bit independent, but in fact, they're all inextricably linked. And they're linked extremely closely by the battery material chemistry that actually formulates these devices and the materials that go into them. And so we want to take a bit of a deeper dive. We really have to examine each individual material that's important in batteries and the, in the interlaced supply chains uh, that bring those materials all to the battery manufacturing facilities. And so in addition to lithium, which we've already sort of mentioned, cobalt and nickel are the two other critical materials which round out the trio of materials that are ab absolutely crucial in the fabrication of lithium-ion batteries. This plot on the screen here tells us two things. The first is the relative cost of these materials, with cobalt being at the top. And the second is the relative staying power of these materials as battery chemistries continue to innovate into the future. By the name of the battery, lithium ion, you might guess that lithium is the most foundational material in a lithium ion battery chemistry, and we don't think it's going anywhere anytime soon, whereas the other two might be a little bit different. For example, cobalt, while it actually supplies the highest energy density of any material alternatives uh, relative to itself, it actually also comes with a large safety risk. You can imagine if you pack a lot of energy into a small battery, that could all be released fairly rapidly in an accident, which is a negative thing, of course. In addition, most of the cobalt we use today, about 85%, comes from the Democratic Republic of the Congo. It's actually mined there with pretty poor environmental and humanitarian conditions. And so as a result of this, battery manufacturers today are moving away from cobalt-rich chemistries towards nickel-rich chemistries, and it's been a pretty smooth transition so far. Unfortunately, lithium is not so easy to replace as cobalt. And this is kind of evidenced by the fact that within the past six months alone, the cost of lithium-containing materials, like lithium carbonate that go into batteries, has increased by five-fold, and yet there's no, no real discussion of, you know, how do we replace lithium and go to something like sodium? It's maybe possible, but it's way down the line into the future. And so the question then becomes, if we can't actually you know, reduce the cost of these materials or eliminate all these materials from batteries, what are the options on the table today uh, that we can achieve to uh, bring down the cost and bring us into an electrified future? The first is to actually continue to investigate new chemistries without nickel and cobalt. For instance, a chemistry called lithium iron phosphate, 
which still, however, relies on lithium, as I sort of mentioned before, and has lower energy density based on the lack of nickel and cobalt in, that, in those materials. So that's a work in progress and is ongoing, of course. The second thing is to actually investigate alternative sources of the same materials to bring down the costs and really smooth out the availability over time. A great example of this is the extraction of lithium from seawater, which is sort of a nascent process that's being developed more and more, but at this point today is still relatively inefficient and far too expensive. But imagine if you could actually do this, extract lithium from seawater and really democratize the entire source globally anywhere along the coastline in the world. That would be a pretty amazing thing and should be, continue to be worked on. Lastly, and I think today most feasibly and most relevant to this discussion, is the recycling of lithium-ion batteries. So there is a process today in place for recycling these things, but it's relatively expensive and extremely complex. And as such, only about 10% or fewer of all lithium-ion batteries today are recycled. A pretty egregious number especially when you contrast that with lead-acid batteries, over which 95% of batteries are recycled. Obviously, it's a more mature technology, and that process has been built over time. But when you look at the value of material in a lead-acid battery versus lithium, it's extremely low. And so there's not only an economic opportunity here, but of course, there's also a sustainability opportunity, which we really care about. And it's this third piece, this battery recycling, which I've been laser-focused on for the last year. I've co-founded a company called Citration, and today we're developing a low-cost and sustainable process for extracting lithium and other critical materials in the battery recycling process. So I'm going to tell you a bit about that, but first I want to show you how it's actually done today, which is really not ideal. A typical dead lithium-ion battery is actually, if it's being recycled, so 90% do not go through this process, but if it's being recycled, it'll actually be disassembled manually and then ground up into a powder called black mass, before being dissolved in an acidic solution like sulfuric acid. At this point, the manufacturer, or the recyclers iterate through about 20 stages of, of adding a whole ton of chemical and heat energy into the process iteratively to pull out one by one byproducts that are of very low value and contaminating the more valuable products like cobalt, nickel, and lithium. Ultimately, we can arrive at the pure products, but it's not efficient and it's way too costly, and that's why we're in the current situation that we're in. Citration is enabling a paradigm shift in this process by, by instituting a new type of extraction technology, which I'll describe in a second. But essentially, the paradigm shift is that we start out in the same way, by grinding up and dissolving these batteries. But then we go through only a two-step process to very selectively extract the most valuable materials and let the less valuable materials flow downstream to a more conventional waste disposal or recycling approach. So what's inside of this extraction technology? That's the big question, right? What's inside of here is something that we call a smart membrane filtration technology. This is a membrane filter that was designed at MIT by myself and co-founder, Professor Jeffrey Grossman, about five years ago at the beginning, and all the way until the present time and into the future as well. And what this membrane is, is very much like another membrane filter technology you may be aware of, a simple polymer or ceramic membrane, but we have two main advantages, and I would, I would say uniqueness, over those technologies. The first is that we can survive the harsh conditions, uh, pH one or below, of these battery recycling environments and these hydrometallurgical spaces. And second, we can actually, in a very active way, target specific critical materials, not just based on their size or charge, as you would see in a normal membrane, but also based on additional electrochemical characteristics of the material itself. So this is a major advantage uh, relative to the status quo. Here's a picture on the right of the membrane itself. It's a silicon-based material consisting of a flat sheet with a whole bunch of pores or holes passing from the top to the bottom. And if you were to cut this in half, what you would see, and then look at it with a microscope, what you would see is the top side at the very top of the screen, the bottom side on the bottom, and these pores, which appear in here in dark contrast, running from top to bottom all the way through the, the layer of material. And what these pores do is transmit things like water or gas, but also very selective critical materials like lithium, while blocking everything else out on the feed stream side at the top of the screen. And for some context in terms of scale here, just to give you an idea, the whole thickness of this material is about five times thinner than a human hair. And so you can imagine the width of these pores in the material that are on the scale of molecules to be able to actually filter out various critical materials. And so in addition to the highly tunable material itself, we can actually implement a lot of different stimuli in the actual filtration operation. So as I alluded to a little bit earlier, this is a very simple example where we have a whole mixture of, say, battery materials, lithium, cobalt, nickel, a bunch of contamination as well. We have a single membrane structure. We can flip a switch and allow only the red material, say lithium, to pass through those pores. We can then, using the exact same membrane, flip the switch again and, say, allow cobalt or nickel to flow through and block out everything else. So you can imagine this is a really impactful 
uh, type of instrument or, or um, solution in the battery recycling space where you have these complex valuable mixtures. You could also imagine, imagine there's a large number of other really interesting applications in industrial separations around the world. And we're really here just scratching the surface and very excited to see where we can go with the potential of this technology. And so I'll conclude with that, and I just want to thank you all very much for your time and attention. And I hope that I've convinced you that today, uh, supercharging sustainability is, is a superpower that's critical, not just for us at Citration or for all of us in this room, but for all of us truly around the world. So thank you very much. <laughs>